Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin, and thank you for uh, coming to watch another watercolour painting demonstration. This is a, an old painting I did ages ago. Um, and look at it, it just struck me. I haven't tried doing waves like this for ages, so I, I thought I'd uh, give that a bash today. First, just a quick whiz through the colours. We've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. All listed in the video description. Um, water jar here, clean water. Um, the brush, large rants and hake brush, hiding under there. Um, and 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. So one quick last look and I'll get started. So starting with the big hake brush, this is just clean water, just to lubricate the paper all over and stop any hard edges in the sky. Also stops it from doing all crinkly, you know what colour paper does when it's either too thin or too wet. Um, so I'm just going to go with a bit, of, a bit of raw sienna. Just bash that in like that. Clean the brush. A um, bit of alizarine crimson. Bit of Ultramarine, ultramarine. Yeah, I'm just going to bring that all the way down to the bottom. A little bit of Payne's grain there as well. Ultramarine, ultramarine, Payne's grey, maybe just little, little clouds in there in the sky, but I want to keep these pretty, pretty small, a little bit on this side as well, that's all I'm going to do for that, just keep it sort of on there. Now we've got a distant mountain right over there. I'll just take a little bit of everything again. A bit of raw sienna, ultramarine, Payne's grey, lizard and crimson, all the sky colours. Just dip the tips of the brush in the, uh, in the water, just to bring all that hairs back together. I was separating a bit there. Just to, just to change it a little bit, it's all the same colour. Um, and I'm conscious I've got my horizon line almost right in the middle, which I've tried to avoid. So I'm going to make those mountains a little bit taller, just so I can bring the horizon right down a bit. Bit of raw sienna, and that's just going to. There's a dot that comes on the brush, but I'm just going to use that just to, just to paint with. Get a bit of variation in there. Yeah. Just watching the water there. And I'm just leveling it off. I could have waited a little bit longer because I'm sure it's going to stretch a bit more but I just want it flat. So I'm just trying to decide what I'm going to do with this water now. Um, first I'm going to get dry. I'm just going to leave it. There we go. Right. I'll be
be honest with you, I can't even remember how I did it. So I'm just going to have to experiment with it. Because like I said, I haven't done water like this for absolutely ages. So I'm just going to play around with it, I think. In fact, I might just try a quick sweep first. See what happens. Try that. And I'm going to... on the brush. Now, now I'm taking a point over here. I'm going to use this as a pivot point now. And I'm going to put some lines in like that and keep you back to the same place. I'm putting in darker bits. I'm just leaving little gaps between back up to my pivot point. Look at this nice and dark there there. Yeah, a little bit darker down there. So just so that the uh, the waves stand out a bit better. Darker there, darker up there, and then I'm dipping it into the brush just to sort of soften it off in the distance. Not too strong. I put it in a bit too strong originally. And it's just hit and miss, hit and miss. Then where it misses, it sort of waves in the distance, which I'm going to mess about with now. And what I'm going to do is clean the brush. Very little water, it's just clean and damp. And I'm just going to sort of Soften these bits in between. Don't want any paint on the brush, just sort of softening it off. And it's just getting a little bit darker. It's where the tops of the waves are going to be. Going these are in crimson. Well, I'm just taking all the sky colours again, really. Just making a dark mix. And I've, I've really got, I've got sort of, I'm going to have sort of four lines of waves one there, one there, one there, and one there. So the big and biggest one's going to be at the front here. So I want that top dark because I'm going to take a bit of paint off with the, uh, with the rigger brush. Same for that one, just darkening that a bit. Don't want too straight, so I'm just going up and down a little bit. I want that a bit darker. I'm just making them slightly smaller as they get further and further away. And this one's furthest away. So let's just darken that a little bit. So you can see the sort of bands, like four bands going in there. And then just some of them in the foreground. I'll do that afterwards. I'll mess about with the foreground short afterwards, maybe put a few little stones and things, pebbles. Um, so first thing I've got to do is just dry it a little bit. In fact, pull that in and make sure the paper's flat. Don't be flat against the board. This is just a nine mil piece of plywood I picked up from the uh, local local hardware store. Cut to shape, just so it's the right width for the paper so I can get the clips on. distinct waves there which I've darkened. So what I'm going to do now is take with a little rigger brush and a piece of tissue and now we're going to put the tops of the waves in. You know where the water breaks and it's all white. So starting I might start with the with the distant ones first. 
just start up here, let's just see what happens. So I need to just and I sort of I sort of if you can see that. I'll show you close up afterwards. I'm doing a sort of it's like a sort of vague sort of V V shape. You'll see better when I come to the foreground ones. I'm doing, I'm just sort of blocking it in, in a sort of, um, I don't know what you call the shape. If you can imagine, um, sort of like that, that sort of shape. And then, Just taking out with a t-shirt and it just looks like waves breaking on the top on the top and you can start there bring it down come down and then back up again and then across the top pick it out with the t-shirt and you've got like a little wave there let's do one in the foreground so it's easy to see um if you can imagine let's put one there so i'm starting there and all i'm doing is just a clean damp brush I'm just swirling it round, I'm coming down towards the bottom of the wave and then I'm going back up to the top of that wave and then across the top back to where I started, take it out of the tissue and it just looks like a little, well it's meant to look like a, a sort of breaking wave, you can always go on, get back into it afterwards, take a bit more out if it needs it, so look. Clean the brush, a bit more water, and then have a few little little ones across the top there. A few little ones across the top, and then we come down to the next the next bigger one. So I'm just swirling the brush around, down, then back up, back up to the top of the way, which is along there, and then across the top again, back to where I started. Dab it with a tissue and then if enough paint hasn't come off just go back over it just wet the brush again back over it just little circular motions and then it goes to smaller again dab it off again clean tissue make sure your tissue is clean take the paint off better and then just follow this along just the top of the wire just where it's breaking So that's that brush right let's see let's see if this brush this is a bit of slightly bigger brush let's see if it speeds it up a little bit so i'm going to do let's do this one so i'm doing them down there oh, plenty of water coming off now plenty of paint rather and then across the top Definitely quicker with this brush. Um, some waves on this one. So it just comes down and then back up again. Clean the brush, get that paint off, and then back in it again if you want to get it whiter. And then really, if you, 
trying to get sort of random, random patterns. That's why you have to get it on dark, because the dark you can get it on, the more it will sort of stand there. So I hope you can see that okay. I think it works better with the rigger brush actually. It's just a bit more, it just looks a bit more realistic, but it just takes a little bit longer. What helps is, is this, uh, the, the corners that if they just go just slightly higher than the rest, the rest of the way, it just makes it look as if the water's sort of a bit more force in it, it just makes it look a bit more realistic. practice with it I think. Like I, said, I, haven't, I haven't done anything like this for absolutely ages. Yeah, I think that'll do. Get the general idea with that. Let's put a, just a little bit of shoreline in there. Um, I might go with a bit of, well shoreline's that sort of sandy yellow it now, so let's go with a bit of raw sienna. This is the most logical, logical colour to use. Push that right into those waves. Um, I was going to put some pebbles in, but also I'm going to have to darken that a bit, a little bit. So I'm also going to go with a bit of burnt umber. Awesome, man. Let's get a sort of darker colour. Just sort of arrange the other little dark section. Yeah. And then a few little pebbles on the beach. Pebbles and stones. I'm trying to make them as, as sort of random as I possibly can rather than stick them on a straight line. So obviously they'll show up better in the, the, the darker areas. So it just looks like a few little fisherman in somewhere I think. Just give it a bit of red, which is a bit of blue. I'm just gonna stick a Oh. 
just doesn't look right on the blocks or that head. And I'm going to start again. A bit more water, a bit of red, a bit of blue. It's not great, but it looks slightly, slightly better than it did before. Yeah, the fishing rod's too wary. Too. I need a reference picture to work from. I think I just can't get this to look right. I don't know. Let's just stick a shadow in there just to make it look a bit. left now, I'm going to stick me name down now. Yeah. I'll just stick a one, two, three little birds flying away. Right. Let's see what that looks like with the names on it. Here's the painting all mounted up. So let's uh, see what it, the, how it compares to the photograph. So in the photograph, I just put the two banks of waves in. You've tiny little ripples in the distance there. I don't know if it would have been better or worse to be honest with the with two rather than the four sort of banks I've put in. Um, But as usual, started with the sky. We've got raw sienna all the way down, um, and then it was sort of a lizarding crimson and burnt umber just to create these uh, darker clouds either side of the the, the lights I'm trying to create in the centre. Just a few little clouds, extra clouds there, put in using the hate brush. I've tried to keep it sort. I think it always generally looks better. Um, it's so easy to overdo, often I've put clouds all over the place, I think it looks better just left alone a lot of the time. And then the, the colour scheme throughout the, the whole of the painting really, it's the same, predominantly the same four colours. You see the same sky colours here in this uh, mountain across the water. Just picked up a few dollops of, of raw sea in her ear, just, just um, hit and miss along the coastline. And then the waves were just sort of pivoted here and then just sort of four lines coming out final one sort of straight and then angled down more and more and then just put in dark dark the centre you know the main part was dark and then just taking out the tops really with the I think a rigger brush works works the best makes it look the most realistic just take out the general sort of wave wave shape and then just dab out with a tissue just to help uh, finish the effects off, just to remove the paint really and get down to the whites of the paper. And obviously the, the further away they are, the, uh, the smaller and smaller they get. A bit of scraping out here with the uh, car just to try and create a few pebbles and stones on the beach. Little fisherman there, could have done with a reference picture really because it, it doesn't look quite right. But he's, uh, anyway, he's meant to be uh, doing a bit of sea fishing over there. Finally some little birds flying up towards the mountain. Well, that's it for today, then I hope you enjoyed that. Um, keep practicing. Um, any comments, just leave them down in the, in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you've got to say on today's painting. Any questions, please ask. Keep practicing. 
please subscribe if you haven't done so already to uh, join the community. I'd love to have you with us. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you again soon.